Good evening everyone, time for another member update. Wanted to do a little a different sort of video, another kind of down the rabbit hole video about cars and I had been looking at new cars just to see what I could get. I'm always looking for the cheapest and best mileage car that I can find and right now the best I've been able to find is about 13 14,000 about maybe 36 miles to the gallon but I stumbled across a couple of things the first was a before its news article 50 mile 50 plus mile per gallon cars not allowed in the US but before we watch that let's watch this uh, video from this gentleman who is talking about his experience in Britain. Okay, let's see how this works. In fact, I'm here to tick you off. I was over in Europe for a two and a half week vacation. We rented a Volkswagen station wagon. I don't know if it was a Golf or a Passat, but it was a station wagon. We had four people, and none of them small. Packed with luggage, drove it for 2,100 miles, and we kept. We were amazed at what the uh, the mileage was on it. When we got through, it worked out to 52 miles a gallon. I could not believe this. So when talking to the dealer over there, they said, yeah, the car on highway with a normal load gets 72 miles to the gallon. After talking to another person over there, I found out that the current Ford model they were selling over there in a diesel was getting 70.1 70, 70 or 71 miles a gallon. So when I come back to the U.S., I called the local Volkswagen dealer. They said, yes, we have a Volkswagen TDI Passat. What's well, the mileage? 44 miles at a gallon. Well, no, I want the 1.6 Blue Motion TDI. Now, oh, oh, well, you can't get that in that model here. Well, why not? The U.S. government won't allow it. Now, I thought this was BS, so what I did is I started doing some research. Now, when you go online, if you go to Volkswagen America, check out the mileage, you'll see what they offer. Then go back and make sure you type in Volkswagen of UK and go to their specs and their, uh, let me see here, engine and performances. And you will see that the Blue Motion 1.6 TDI is 78.5 miles per gallon highway, 54 miles per gallon city with an average of 69 miles per gallon. So I've called a couple of news places. I, you know, people should be pissed off about this because. The current administration is telling everybody, we're going to demand that Detroit come and have better fuel efficiency. We know they can come up with it. Well, of course they can come up with it. After talking to my local dealer again today, he said, yes, we're very familiar with the motor. We can't sell it here. And I said, well, why can't they bring the motor in? He goes, look, it's worse than that. He goes, Volkswagens are made here in the U.S. that are used here in the U.S., most of them. He goes, we actually, at the factory, install that motor and manufacture that motor that you're talking about. But we're not allowed to even sell it here. We have to ship it to South America and other countries. He goes, also, Ford makes cars here that are up in the 70 miles per gallon, but they're not allowed to sell in the U.S. And I asked him why, and he said, well, originally they said it was a, because they were too pollutant. They didn't have the efficiency. They put out approximately 10% more pollutants per gallon of fuel. And I quickly caught on, and he goes, yeah, you understand. When you work it out, though, it gets twice as good fuel efficiency, so it's actually less pollutant. But we don't base ours on the mileage, pollutants per mileage. We base it on pollutants per gallon of fuel. So when that was brought back to their attention, the administration said, current administration said, it's because of economic reasons. Well, if you sit down and you think about it, you can figure out the economic reasons. And this is what it is. If you've ever looked, our roads are repaired so he's going to go into the tax conspiracy explanation. They don't want their tax revenues to go down. And uh, there are other explanations. There are a lot of complicated issues with this because you've got the royal gallon and then you've got the, that's the imperial gallon, and that's different than our gallon so you have to do a lot of conversion and it's very confusing it's a very hard story to chase down now this is the before its news article and they cover 
a number of these cars here. Here's a Toyota 52 US. Here's a Nissan 56 miles per gallon US. Here's the car he was talking about, the TDI Volkswagen Passat wagon, and that's 65. And then there's some of these new ones that they're talking about. So I tried to chase this down. Now it is very difficult to chase this thing down because I think probably disinformation. Whenever you try to search for highest mile per gallon cars in the world, you're just not able to find them. They only show you stuff from the US. Now I did manage to find something that's fairly informative here. Before I show that to you, I want to show you the car that I did find here. And this is the a Volkswagen that I found here. As far as I know, this is the cheapest Volkswagen you can get here. This is a 2014 Jetta. And you can see that it's MSRP 16 grand to 30 grand. That's a ridiculous spread right there. But my guess is you're not going to probably get a car for less than 17, 18 grand. And you can see the city is about 23 to 30 and the highway is 33 to 42. So give them the benefit of the doubt and put it in the middle. Your average is going to be about 35. So pretty poor mileage and a fairly high price. Now, I remember back in high school, when I was back in high school, I had a friend who had one of those little tiny Honda cars. He actually had two of them. And those got more than 50 miles to the gallon. Now, when Jennifer and I were in California in the 90s, we had a Honda CX, I think it was, or maybe it was an EX, but it was the little little Honda and we consistently got about 48 miles to the gallon on that car. So, the question comes up, why can't you get that today? You can't even get that today. So, definitely something stinks about this, but it's very hard to track it down. Now, I found a way to make it a little bit easier and the first thing I want to show you is this converter here. This is a 100 km liter converter because this is how the fuel economy is quoted overseas. It's liters per hundred kilometers and you have to convert that to miles per gallon so we actually have this converter here that makes things a lot easier the other converter is going to be a currency converter now the reason why I have South Africa here is because I've got a site here that shows you cars available in South Africa so using that now it was m very difficult to get the information in Europe because most of the sites are in another language you have to use Google Translator it doesn't translate these specs so fortunately I found this South African site now let's start with this model that I found here I believe this is the cheapest and best deal there but you can explore it for yourself when we go back and look at the models available you'll be shocked because it's certainly not something that you have available here but this is the Volkswagen Polo Vivo and you can see that the key things you're gonna have here is the price and again this is in Rand so you need your Rand converter and I've already put that in there it's 132,000 Rand that comes to 12,500 US dollars. Uh, the other converter is going to be that kilometer, 100 kilometer converter, and you can see that rating. This is always hard to find this stuff. Let's see here. Fuel consumption, urban. Fuel consumption, extra urban, and fuel consumption, uh, extra urban. So let's just go with the best here. You can see that's 4.4. So if we go over to, to our converter 
4.4 converts to 53.46 miles per gallon. So we're talking about a Volkswagen. Now, it's going to be hard for me to believe that a company like Volkswagen is going to make junky cars and sell them overseas but make good cars and sell them in the US so I don't know how good of a car this Polo Vivo is but I can tell you that this Polo Vivo costs twelve thousand five hundred dollars new and it gets 53 miles to the gallon based on these conversions now let's go back and look at the cars that are available here so you can see here this is the vehicletraders.co.za this is a South African site now if you remember back oh maybe five years or so ago we had the news stories coming out about Cherry now Cherry is a very very popular brand in fact I think it's one of the most popular in the world because it's a Chinese brand so there were articles about this car being sold in the United States never happened now there's also this car the Tata Tata Motors that's the Indian car so you got two cars cheap cars that have pretty good mileage and are not allowed to be sold in the US now a couple of the arguments are that it's the emissions now if you remember from his video there the ridiculous restrictions in the US make you measure emissions per gallon but as he pointed out if you have a car that's twice as efficient on gas mileage and the emissions are only 10% higher then it's actually much more uh, or much less polluting because it goes twice as far on a gallon but the US calculates that wrong so let's look at this the first thing you're gonna notice is there's a lot more types of cars available than there are in the United States but let's look at the cherry and you can see here that we have a bottom of the line cherry here this is going to be the cherry qq3 and this price starts at 84,900 rand so let's do the conversion on that and take out the comma and that comes to eight thousand dollars for that car so let's take a look at the car uh, subcompact it appears to be very small but it doesn't appear to be smaller than some of the micro compacts or subcompacts that I've seen uh, already available in the US so let's look at prices and specs we already know the price on this one get it for about eight thousand dollars so let's go down to our hundred kilometer fuel efficiency rating and you can see that here you really only get the fuel consumption average you can see that the urban and the extra urban is not available so we can probably guess that the the best highway mileage rating is going to be quite a bit better so we'll say about 5.5 that would be a, a fair guess so at 5.5 we've got 42 miles to the gallon that you're gonna get that's as good or better than anything available right now in the US for eight thousand dollars now people are going to say well that car is not safe now I've heard those arguments as well and my counter to that is how safe is a motorcycle so I don't buy this I don't buy these arguments that the government is making I think that this is just a matter of protecting certain industries and 
restricting the economic freedom of Americans. So let's let's see what we can find with Tata Motors. I'm sure if we looked at a lot of these others, we could probably find cheap cars as well. So it looks like the cheap one here is the Tata Indica. Looks like a standard subcompact to me. And I pulled up test drives on YouTube of these. They seem like fairly straightforward cars. Americans are going to be scared by horror stories, but really that's just a bunch of nonsense. So the fuel efficiency, the fuel consumption's 7.4. So this one's 99. So this car is 99. And that's $9,500. And we're 7.4 on the fuel efficiency. Not nearly as good as the Cherry. So about 32. So still, that's fairly decent. Let's take a look at, now I haven't looked at any of these yet, so let's take a look at some of the name brands that we know here in the US and I suspect that we will find that there are cars that are not available in the United States that are made like he said the car he was talking about was actually made in the United States just not available for sale here so here's some Nissans there's a little Nissan pickup there look to be fairly expensive but you could get this Nissan Micra that's 130 so that's about twelve thousand dollars and this Nissan Micra So you can see this is fairly time consuming. And you can see they don't have the other two. They have the average 5.2. So this is going to be overall, this is going to be an average of highway and city, and that's 45. So it's probably 55 to 60 miles per gallon on the highway for about 12,000 bucks. So you can see that we're definitely being taken for a ride here. Let's check a couple of others. We know that well Nissan is formerly, you know, Datsun, high quality. One that I saw was the Renault and it doesn't look like well yeah we have let's find the cheap Renault here looks like we have a Renault Sandero 129,000 And the urban, that's bad, but the extra urban, 5.4. So highway mileage on that one, it's about 43. So it doesn't look like the, the Renault is uh, going to be the top pick for that. So let's check one more. Let's look and see what's available for Toyota. And there's the Yaris. The Yaris is the one you can buy in the US. The Edios, uh, that's I've never seen that here. 
and the Igo. Never seen that car here. So let's look at this Edios hashback. That's 115.8. So say 116. We're talking eleven thousand dollars. And we've got six on the average fuel consumption. So that one comes in at 40 miles average. So that's what you're looking at there's no question that people in the United States have the most restricted choices they have the worst gas mileage they actually have the worst emissions as well so you have to ask yourself the question why why is this the case why is it that all of these great cars are available overseas but they can't be sold in the US well one's going to be as he pointed out the tax revenue another is going to be the oil companies and probably another is going to be protection of the auto manufacturers so in reality you are living in one of the least free nations on the face of the earth when it comes to your ability to choose vehicles and regardless of all the rhetoric that's put out by this administration and other administrations about how they want people to be green and efficient someone like myself who wants the cheapest car with the best mileage isn't going to be able to find anything that competes with what's available in South Africa and that's a pretty sad statement and we'll talk to you next time